welcome to the Mogul Network. My name is Yusra. And I'm Ellie. Today our theme is how Europeans came into this country, the Mughal Empire. In order to gain further insight on this topic, we're going to go over to Nadia, who is going to give us a brief summary of how the Mughal Empire first started to interact with Europe. Thanks, Ellie. So the first European establishments in India were made by the Portuguese in Calicut in 1498. Soon the Dutch, French, and the British all had trading posts along the coast, each with an East Indian company. Eventually, however, they all lost their power to the British, who expanded their control all over India. Back to you guys. Alright, that's it for today's special broadcast. Join us tomorrow for our regular news. Hello and welcome to Decline, the show where we discuss how our Mughal Empire went into decline and how the British took advantage of it. There have been many reasons and factors that contributed to the decline of our Mughal Empire. One of the biggest reasons is because the Mughal Empire was decentralized. This is something that the Europeans, especially the British, took advantage of. For example, when they first established trading posts, they did so on coastal parts of India, where the emperor did not have much control over because of the decentralization. British factories gradually began to apply British law and trading posts grew in the area and population. British adventurers even began living permanently in India. Another reason for the decline was because of the lavish lifestyles of the Mughals. Emperors had to tax their subjects heavily in order to support the construction of such architectural wonders like the Taj Mahal. Again, Europeans used this to their advantage. When nobles and other tiny rulers used this as an excuse to separate themselves from the emperor's control, the British and the French offered them support. Another reason is because of the reign of Emperor Aurangzeb. He was a very religiously zealous emperor and very religiously intolerant. Down with Hinduism! Down with Christianity! Go Islam! If you are non-Muslim, you must pay taxes! He wished to rid the empire of all things un-Islamic. One of the ways he did this was by imposing the jizya tax, which was a tax on non-Muslims. Under Aurangzeb, the Mughal empire was at its largest, but this was a bad thing since it was hard to control the vast empire. Also, because so much money was spent on lavish lifestyles, the Mughal army was not very good. They had little training, little discipline, and little unity. Emperors had, to, had given care of the armies to various nobles, which led them to disunification. Um, because soldiers began to identify themselves by ethnic groups rather than Mughals. The death of Aurangzeb in 1707 is considered the start of the decline of the Mughal Empire. After Aurangzeb, there were only just a bunch of weak, incapable, and corrupt rulers. The British, who had kicked out all other European powers in India, used this private company, the British East India Company, to slowly take control as the empire weakened. They have been giving bribes to emperors and other rulers for a long time in order to get what they wanted. Here is an interview with Emperor Jahangir that displays this. Hi, I'm Nadia, the infield reporter, and I'm here with... Emperor Jangahir, who is the current emperor of the Mughal Empire. So, Your Highness, why do you think the British were so successful in India? Well, one of the reasons that they were so successful is because, well, sometimes, just sometimes, they would give uh, political gifts to people with power, like emperors. One emperor received almost 90,000 pounds. You mean like bribes? I prefer the term political gift. But of course, I was not involved in any of this, you know. Of course. Soon the East India Company began strengthening its military capabilities. In order to gain power, they had slowly been pulling strings to slowly gain control of certain states, provinces, and principalities. One example of this is when they conspired with Hindu traders and moneylenders against the governor of Bengal to take over his state. The, the East India Company won the Battle of Plassey of 1757 and took control of Bengal. This is considered a major breakthrough for the British in the subcontinent. After the company took control of Bengal, it slowly and surely began its seizure of the whole of India. Alright, that's all we have for today. Tune in next week, same time, same place. News Flash! 
So, we've just received information that there's been a rebellion against the British. As we all know, the British East India Company began recruiting native citizens as troops in 1667 in order to maintain control during their trading operations. In 1748, the British government followed suit and began rec recruiting and training Indians to fight with their weaponry and methods. The Indian units were called native sepoys and soon became the largest part of the British forces in India, eventually outnumbering European troops 10 to 1. There was an incredible amount of tension that only needed a small spark to set off a huge revolt. There had been minor outbreaks within the Sepoy ranks before now in 1857, but these had all quickly and brutally been suppressed. Alright, that's all the information that we have now, but we'll keep you updated. We're back with more information on the Sepoy Mutiny. The first event was the bloody uprising at the garrison in Meru in which the mutineers murdered every European they found. Then they marched to Delhi and placed themselves under the leadership of the Emperor Badahar Shah. Throughout May and June, the idea of mutiny spread throughout India. On July 17, the British discovered that 200 European men, women, and children had been murdered a month earlier in the mutiny and siege at Kanpur. Suspected mutineers were tied to cannons and executed. In six months, the mutiny was broken and now British power is restored. Since the last Mughal Emperor, Bahadur Shah, was exiled by the British, the Mughal Empire is now over. That means we can't be called the Mughal ne Network anymore. Well guys, that's the end of our newscast for today. But don't go away, because there's an episode of everyone's favorite soap opera coming up. Yeah, and for those of you who don't know, Mughal Family, which is a soap opera, is a soap opera about a European girl that marries a Mughal painter and comes to live with him and with his family. It shows how she brings her in her European influences, but is not appreciated by the Mughals. Potatoes, tomatoes, chili, squash. Squash? Squash is what I do to bugs. It's actually really good. Just try this it. This is the last straw. You have crossed the line. You know what? I don't want to be a good little Indian wife anymore. I demand respect. I'm leaving. 